This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and now for something a little bit different. In a land where everything is a sequel to a sequel these days in laptops, we have a Samsung laptop, which doesn't come around all that often, and it's a complete redesign. This is the Samsung Galaxy Book Flex. Besides this royal blue zingy color, which I kind of like, uh, and got silver sides, the industrial design is very different from what Samsung has done before, and we reviewed almost every generation, and they went from a kind of sort of MacBook Air clone combined with 2005 Monster's laptop back look, I know it looks so subjective, to something that is really high quality looking and very rigid. But that's not the most interesting thing here. This is a 360 degree convertible, by the way, available in 13.3 inch and 15.6 inch sizes. But this is the first laptop to have a QLED display. You've seen these on higher end Samsung TVs and such, and it's a really nice looking display. And you need a little bit more here. I know a lot of you artists if you're watching a Samsung laptop review. Yes, we still have the Wacom EMR pen, otherwise known as the S Pen. Sam Samsung mentions, oh, it's a Bluetooth pen, but that just means that you can do the air command stuff and all that via Bluetooth remote control stuff, but it's Wacom EMR tech technology. With really great pressure sensitivity, the whole nine yards tilt support is even there. Oh, we're going to look at it now. So it's not cheap, but versus its competitors, it's actually not so badly priced. The 13.3 inch is $1349. If you want the 15.6 inch, which has pretty much the same internals, but four gigs more of RAM, then that one is $1399. So a lot less expensive than a Dell XPS 13 2-in-1, but HP Spectre X360s, you know, they have really great sales on those, and the volume of manufacturer means you can find them at a good price. So more expensive than that, typically. You have a full HD QLED display. So full HD on a 13.3 inch laptop, for me, I have no issues with that. I don't see a real need for 4K, even if you're photo editing, because it's a pretty tiny screen. The 15.6 inch is still full HD. There, I might have hoped for something more, at least 2K resolution. I haven't seen that one. That one's also QLED display but I'm sure it's gorgeous looking. So what is QLED? It's a fancy Samsung marketing name for quantum dot technology, something we saw years and years ago, back when Sony still made Vio laptops, they started the quantum dot. It's evolved a whole lot since then. Sony still uses it in their higher end TVs that compete with OLED screens and the colors are gorgeous on this. The color calibration and the naturalness of it doesn't look cartoony or vibrant or have weird color tints or feel hard on your eyes. That's what's better than OLED. So that's the nice part right there. It looks like your TV, which is to say the color balance looks pleasing, looks really vivid. Versus OLED, you're not going to get the same level of contrast because this still uses backlighting just like an LED or LCD display would. Still, the contrast levels on this are very good and the black levels are good on on it. So contrast, not as good, but still looks awesome. Color gamut, you've got that there. The potential to get very bright, you also have too, because it does have a backlight. It's harder for OLEDs to get really bright because well, they don't have backlighting on them. Uh, the display, Samsung claims it's a 400 nit display. We measure 333 nits on it, and it goes to 600 nits for the outdoor mode, which is a toggle switch in the Samsung settings if you want to do that, which is inordinately bright for a laptop. But in case you need it outdoors, it's there for you. This is a glossy display, so there are some reflections. And yes, of course, it's a touch screen as well as supporting the pen and the usual 360 degree hinges, so you can use it in tablet mode or tent mode or whatever. So the big selling point for this, I would say for the Samsung laptop versus the competition is for those of you who are artists or who spend a lot of time taking notes and you want the most natural paper on pen like experience in terms of the pen responsiveness. It's really hard to beat Wacom EMR and it's a real shame that it's just about, no, it's not any other laptop anymore just about. It used to be pretty prevalent more than 10 years ago. It's the best technology. For this versus using say a Wacom Cintiq or using an iPad Pro which have fantastic drawing experiences, I would say that this holds its own. So if you're looking for a laptop that you can use as a laptop and as an art machine, you got it. By the way, the 15.6 inch has a QLED display. All of Samsung's new laptops do it. And let's talk about that. There's also the Samsung Galaxy Flex Alpha. Alpha usually means better, like the brightest star in the galaxy or something like that. In this case, it means less and it's more affordable. It's like $850 starting price. That one has a smaller battery. It doesn't have pen support. A couple of other differences. It's silvery gray instead of the vivid royal blue color. So that's the deal there. Confusing name though it is. 
And then there's the Galaxy Book Ion, and that one is a traditional laptop. It doesn't 360, it doesn't do the pen, and that one's even lighter than this. This is pretty light. It's 2.5 pounds, and that's about 1.16 kilograms. So the Ion is even lighter. It's a 13.3 inch laptop too, and that one is one kilogram or 2.14 pounds. That one has magnesium alloy on it, which is something that Samsung has played with before. They're always going after the gram to compete with it for being light, and I'm glad they kind of separate it out because there are people who don't really like the flex of magnesium alloy. It doesn't feel as rigid and premium. This one has rigidness and premiumness in specs. I mean, this thing is tanky, yet it's light. It's a good thing then. The design, obviously, it's a matter of personal taste. I like the straight sides on this. It looks very modern and very clean, and they've got the contrast in color, but I leave that up to you to decide. Inside, it's your typical Ultrabook with Intel 10th generation quad-core CPUs. This is available with an i7, i7, or i7. That's the way the Flex rolls. It's the higher end model. For the Flex Alpha, it's a core i5, the cheaper model. You got that. So that's good stuff, and it benchmarks the same as other competing Ultrabooks, and in fact, just about the same as the 2020 13 inch MacBook Pro, which is a little surprising because the MacBook Pro is a higher watch CPU. Anyway, we have Intel Iris Plus graphics because this is an Ice Lake CPU, so you got that more oomphy integrated graphics thing going on. For RAM, this is the only disappointment. 8 gigs of RAM, DDR4, 3733 megahertz fast RAM, but, and it's soldered on, so you can't upgrade it. So for a lot of people, that would be fine. And if you're doing 2D work in Photoshop, even some Lightroom with, uh, you don't have a crazy high megapixel camera, and don't do it professionally with... 200 images in a batch or something like that, but if you have your usual 25 to 35 megapixel camera and you're editing 10, 20, 30, 50 photos at once, it's okay. But if you want to do any 3D work, if you want to do that heavy duty, super heavy duty Lightroom work, then 8 gigs is a little chintzy. I would have liked to see 16 gigs of RAM for what's supposed to be Samsung's top of the line laptop. The SSD is a middling performance. It's actually an Intel SSD, not a Samsung one. Samsung often doesn't use their own parts in their own laptops. By the way, the display is made by Bohitis, not by Samsung as well. But anyway, it's a middle of the road SSD. It is an M.2 SSD. You could upgrade it if you want. In everyday use, you're not going to feel the difference between this and Samsung's fastest SSDs that you might find in another laptop. So that's okay. And it's 512 gigs, so that's uh, ample capacity. And again, upgradable. It has Intel Wi-Fi 6 with Bluetooth 5, so absolutely no complaints there. Like a lot of laptops today, this has USB-C and two Thunderbolt 3 ports, but no USB-A port. If you really need USB-A, there is the HP Spectre X360. There's also a headphone jack and a micro SD card slot. Uh, kind of annoyingly, probably to make it look pretty, it requires one of those little pokey tools, just like you get with the Samsung phone, you get with this too, to poke out the carrier for the micro SD card. This has stereo speakers that are side-firing, AKG branded. They're pretty good. They hold their own against the 13-inch MacBook Air, and that's usually held up as the paragon of good audio quality. I like them well enough, certainly. The trackpad is a Microsoft Precision trackpad, and the keyboard is Samsung's usual magic. I don't know how they do this. It's a low-travel keyboard. It feels like it's about one millimeter like a Magic Keyboard MacBook Pro, but it feels very easy to type on comfortably and accurately. And it's backlit and white because the keys are dark. You have plenty of contrast. And there's FN keys on the top row, so you can adjust the brightness level on the keyboard if you want. By the way, that trackpad, it's not just a Microsoft Precision trackpad, it's a Qi wireless charger, 5 watts. So it's the slowest version of wireless charging, which is just kind of weird. I don't know. I would have had like more RAM and no Qi trackpad charging, but if you're not using your laptop, I suppose, or if you're using a mouse externally instead of the trackpad, you can charge your phone that way, or your wireless charging earbuds, you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> it is what it is. The fingerprint scanner on this is embedded in the keyboard, which isn't so unusual, but it's forward shifted. It's not back where the power button is, because in fact, being a convertible, the power button's on the side of the machine here. I actually like that because you don't have to reach so far over across the keyboard just to use the fingerprint scanner. In terms of cooling, surprisingly, there's two fans inside this thing, which for an Ultrabook you don't usually see. It is very thin and it is metal, so it does need help with cooling. If you're pushing it really, really hard, like we do when we do benchmarks, or if you're doing some Adobe Premiere Pro, which isn't probably the primary use case for a 13-inch Ultrabook, maybe for the 15-inch, it'll get toasty. You'll feel some heat on the bottom and the top. The fans, you'll almost never hear that much. They are not loud, and it doesn't get 
burning hot, but you know, it's working hard. Again, thin design there. Occasionally we see some thermal throttling on the CPU cores if you are pushing it super duper hard. I think for most people's use with an Ultrabook, it will be fine though. One thing I've always liked with Samsung laptops is their control panel, shall we say, their control center. Um, they have an updater app, which is oddly the only way that you get updates. You can't go to their website and do it manually, but that works, so okay. But they give you, give you control over all sorts of things. Do you want to charge the battery only up to like 85% to preserve its life over the years? You can do that sort of thing. There's a quiet mode. It will also cut back on performance, and it doesn't seem so necessary because it's not noisy. But for the display, there's lots of settings. There are several different color calibrations, and that's why I didn't bother with the usual color accuracy graph, because when you got like five choices, it really depends on what you choose. The default is QLED auto mode, and it kind of vibrants things up and makes the display look its best in a variety of situations. It doesn't look garish or unnatural, so I actually use it at that. There's professional mode, which is pretty much your Adobe RGB mode for folks who are doing professional photo editing, for example, or content creation, and a variety of others, including you know, your base sRGB, that sort of thing. There's also a PWM switch, pulse width modulation. So that's the backlight that cycles and some people are sensitive to it. By default, the control for that is turned on, which means that you won't see PWM because basically it's only refreshing at such a high rate that the human eye won't pick it up. So that's nice to have. It won't get quite as dark when you're setting the brightness down when that's active, but it gets plenty dim enough anyway, so sweet. There's also an HDR feature there. It's better than the Windows built-in HDR feature. It actually makes things look a little, well, more contrasty, which is what HDR is supposed to do and bring out the grays in the scene so they don't crush the black and all that sort of thing without looking weird and garish, so I like that addition as well. They also have networking controls and a variety of other things. It's, it's good. So how about battery life? Something got to give here, right? Well, this is really another great point about this laptop. It was part of Intel's Project Athena, which means super long battery life, good performance, yada, yada. But, you know, you take that with a grain of salt. But because this has nearly a 70 watt hour battery inside, 69.7 watt hour, which is unheard of big for an Ultrabook, battery life is stupendous on this. And also, this is another selling point of QLED. It's a lot more power efficient than OLED. OLED's very power efficient if you're only displaying really dark things, which most of us don't do with laptops. But when they are brighter, they use more power than an LCD or an LED display. So power efficient display, only full HD resolution. That means that battery life on this has been crazy. It's been like 14 hours in mixed use at 150 nits of brightness and streaming video. Streaming video, you could just really go that 14 hours. It's crazy stuff. It's quite good. And it comes with a 65 watt charger and a cute little consumer looking white brick like sort of thing. To take the bottom cover off, you have to pry off the four rubber feet. Happily, there's no adhesive involved though, so just use a teeny tiny jewelry screwdriver and carefully pry them up. You can get them off, and then there's Phillips head screws under each one. It's really pretty simple. There's a lot of plastic holding this on on the edges, which is actually not that hard to get off. It's a little harder to get it back on again. And this is really a large battery for an Ultrabook. Honestly, this is nearly 70 watt hours. As you can see right here, it is 69.7 watt hours. Nice that. There's some pretty big magnets here to help it work nicely in convertible mode. Two fans. You don't see that on an Ultrabook with integrated graphics very often. It does help it stay cool, but it's a very thin laptop and the CPU temperatures can get up there if you're pushing it hard. This is the M.2 SSD. It's socketed. This particular one is an Intel SSD. Surprisingly, Samsung does not use their own brand SSD here. And that's about it. RAM is soldered on and so is the Intel Wi-Fi card right there. So that's the Samsung Galaxy Book Flex. Again, we have the 13.3 inch, but you can get in the 15.6 inch. And it's really a nice laptop for the price. It's so good looking. It's so sturdily built. No flex, none of that kind of thing. The Wacom EMR pen for you serious note takers and artists, that really sets it apart from all of the competitors that are currently on the market other than the Cintiq Pro, which is a purpose-built artist tablet. You have phenomenal battery life. You got that QLED display. They have done a really good job. The only thing I can really complain about again is eight gigs of RAM is your only option, which is kind of weird. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and hit that notification bell so you know about them too.